This is my method of removing the keyboard from a B2, B3 series and a C2, C3 series. Uh, a lot of this information will apply to other consoles. It's up to you to determine what information you need to use and what you don't. If your top looks like this, you have a 2 series, in which case the wires from the start run switch are going to have to be unsoldered from the tone generator on the back. If you have the 3 series, such as shown here, you can either unsolder the wires from the back or you can remove the start run switches from that plate there. Uh, it's a simple matter of removing those little ring nuts from the top. It's always a good idea to first loosen the hex nut on the bottom so that way you don't run the risk of marring the plate with a pair of pliers. That nut can be adjusted to make the switch stick out of the top the amount that you want it to. Obviously this has been loosened prior to me filming this so it's a matter of taking it apart and then you can just push the switches through the hole in your music rack. Then you got to remove the two screws on either side of the music rack and then it's a simple matter of lifting it out of position. If you look in from the back you can see those are the wires from your start run switches and those are the wires that will need to be unsoldered if you choose to do so or if you have a 2 series. Just make sure you label everything. Next you're going to want to take the amplifier out. It's all pretty much self-explanatory. All the ter terminals are listed. You're going to have some amps that have the YEL which is the yellow wires terminations on the back. You may or may not have wires attached to that. Those are for the indicator light. All the rest of the wires are pretty much uh, self-explanatory with the number and the uh, letter attached to it. If you have a line box that looks like this, it does not need to be removed. However, all of those wires on the top are going to have to be taken off because those attach to the scanner and they will be in the way. With this particular type of line box all you need to do is unsolder the blue and the red wires the other ones can stay there if you have a line box that's the wooden type that is attached to the top of the uh, top of the uh, the organ there the small square one has two screws that hold it the big one has three screws that hold it uh, you can either just move it out of the way or it's usually easier to go ahead and just unsolder those wires. It'll only take you a couple of minutes and it'll save you the headaches of having to deal with trying to keep that line box out of your way while you're removing the keyboard because that's going to stay attached to your keyboard. Then you have these wires that come up from the bass pedals. You've got the yellow brown and orange wires. As you can see I have them plainly marked. It's always good to mark everything even if you know where they go uh, as a means of second checking yourself when you put it back together again. You also want to remove the ground wires from the very end of the tone generator. There's two ground wires that attach the keyboard to the tone generator. It's always a good idea to remove those first because some of them are pretty short. Then there's four bolts on the bottom of the cabinet. Those are pretty long bolts that attach the keyboard to the cabinet. It's just a simple matter of unscrewing them and taking them out. Put a drop or two of oil on them before you put them back in because most of the times those things are pretty corroded. The last thing that's going to hold the keyboard in place is under the front rail. There's a little plate. It's got two wood screws that go into the front rail and two machine screws that go into the keyboard. All you need to do is remove the two machine screws. Leave those two wood screws in place. 
I will put a block of wood. It's actually a piece of three quarter inch wood uh, it's, um, that, I, that I ripped from a board. Put it up underneath there. You can't really put anything any thicker than that because it'll bump on the top. Go ahead and put that up underneath there. And uh, it'll be obvious in a minute why we do this. It's going to bump into the scanner if you don't. And on the other side of it, you'll notice I not only have that block, but I also put a little bungee cord up around those wires on the uh, patch panel, and it kind of gets it up out of the way. It makes it a whole lot easier to access the terminals when you're unsoldering them. You'll notice that the, there are several terminals on the back that have no wires soldered to them. Now, to make life easier, what you need to do is make sure that you do not solder wires to those terminals when you're reassembling it. So it's best to just mark these in some manner or what I choose to do is bend them out of the way and then there is absolutely no question that you're going to make a mistake when you reassemble it. Just bend them around because nothing is ever going to be attached to those terminals. And that's a permanent way of, uh, of denoting that those terminals don't get attached. You also notice that the wires on this loom are tied together in such a manner that they just fall into place. You'll see that there's six wires there and then a gap and then some more wires. And you'll notice on the terminals, they attach the six places and then there's a gap that matches that terminal that you turned under. So as long as the wires are tied up like that, this whole uh, wire harness will just kind of fall back into place when you reassemble it. All right, after, after you unsolder the whole thing, the blocks up underneath will allow you to just slide the whole keyboard out just like that. What I do is I have a rolling cart, as you can see there, and I have boards up on top of it that match the height of the keyboard. So it's a simple matter of sliding it out onto your rolling cart, and then you can either work on it there or move it to your workbench, whichever you want. Obviously, the installation is the reverse of that.